everyone. We're a couple days away from TFCon, but right now, the most important thing to be discussing right now, and it's that time of year, and I always try to break it down as simply as possible for you guys to understand, it is the Hasbro third quarter report for 2019. And there's a lot of interesting stuff here, a lot of stuff that makes me scratch my head and go, hmm, wonder what's going on here. Now, keep in mind, third quarter, re re quarter reports in general are aimed more towards investors and and bonds and stocks and and they always try to spin the negatives in a positive manner they're never going to be straight up 100 percent in these reports and a lot of times they're never going to give exact information where those negative things are happening so what i try to do a lot of times is when they do post negative stuff uh, while they will give accurate numbers by law they have to um, I kind of let people know what's in that pool of negativity and then we could kind of pick out what that stuff is because Lord knows they'll never say it because they don't want to say if something's dying individually. So the first thing they want to mention in this quarter report is revenue growth for partner brands and emerging brands are offset by the decline of franchise brands and Hasbro Gaming. Now, what they're trying to say here is they didn't do very well this last quarter. And they're saying that those profits were offset by major negatives. And when you look at the numbers here, it's like, oh, wow. Okay. So to give you an idea, so they're franchise brands. Now, franchise brands consist of Transformers, Nerf, My Little Pony, uh, Monopoly, Magic the Gathering, the paper version. Keep in mind, paper, not online, not digital. Um, those brands, which they own, their franchise brands, went down 8% this quarter. And people could blame it on, you know, again, like the stuff that we just listed. Look, I'm not an expert on My Little Pony or Play-Doh or Nerf or Monopoly, but, you know, board games, eh, I don't know about that. We'll get into Hasbro Gaming. That's a whole other thing, too. But I know my Transformers and people aren't really picking up the Cyberverse toys and everything else is relatively expensive. And, you know, we're kind of in an in-between right now. Lord knows that even the whales, as I like to use the term, the people who spend the big money uh, for the Transformer brand, they'll buy anything uh, that has the Transformer logo on it, regardless of its price. Uh, the whales, they kind of put all their money towards Unicron. So a lot of... And they, I, I'm pretty sure Unicron doesn't factor into this, especially. So I get a feeling that just it wasn't a good time for Hasbro, for those franchise brands that they own. Now, the funny thing is, is that then we go into the other negative, which is their Hasbro g gaming stuff, and that got negative 18%. There was tons of losses. Now, what is Hasbro gaming? All those board games. Dungeons and Dragons. Magic the Gathering. All of that was just sucking it dry. And what is in there that affects us? Transformers, the collectible card game part of that problem so is the card game doing well is it not doing well hey we're enjoying it we're playing it but you can't just use the transformer community as a measuring stick of the success of a you know of a trading card game why is star wars for years and years have had a trading card game a trading card and every single one of them get canceled after a couple years what is it dragon balls on it's like fifth fourth card game now and that's like an amazingly huge franchise worldwide. So it's just, it's something that the card game, sadly, from what it looks like, and again, they don't want to say it up front, but you do get the pool of what is in the problem, and then you could kind of pick it. I mean, we could point it, like, we can't say, like, oh, look at Jenga. You know, Jenga, the, 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 the block game, or Scrabble. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the minus 18%, or the game of life, or Bop It, <laughs> you know? So, but I mean, Transformers is in there too. And Magic the Gathering is in there also. But I know that the recent War of the Spark really made some money for them. Same thing with Modern Horizon. So I want to look at more at some of the other stuff too. I don't know what was going on with Dungeons and Dragons. I'd have to, uh, have to ask more friends that know that stuff. But then they talk about, they brag about uh, how well though, at least it was offset because while there was all this negative, the partner brands and the emerging brands did very well. Now, partner brands are Star Wars, uh, Marvel, you know, a lot of stuff. But you know what I honestly think those partner brands were that were successful? Here's what's in those partner brands. And you tell me. Overwatch, Beyblade, Fortnite. 
Frozen, which is now has their second movie coming. And if you've gone to any Walmart recently, there's Frozen stuff everywhere. And that's going to make them mad money. Uh, but the other stuff that's in there, they have a part in Nintendo, Hasbro. They have a, a, a partnership with Nintendo, uh, Sesame Street, the Disney Princess for a license, Marvel. So they're up for like they're 40 percent plus in this. So it kind of offsets the negativity, at least. And they kind of break even in the end, which is like, ugh. And then, of course, the emerging brands, they're trying to, you know, uh, under the emerging brands, they have Mask, they have Micronauts, they have Power Rangers, you know, so I think that of that stuff, I mean, then the, the, some of the other brands like For Real Friends and, and Littlest Pet Shop, Stretch Armstrong, but I think in all of this, the one that's probably the one that gave them that positive percentage, Power Rangers is in there, and Power Rangers made them some money. Now, then we get into another thing that they talk about, which is that of what was favorable for them this year and what was unfavorable for them this year. And then they break it down in numbers afterwards. They said what worked for them this year was cost of sales, uh, cost of sales, which is pretty much product value against product profitability. So if it costs them X amount of money to make this figure and they charge it for this number, um, is it working for them? Yes, it is. So now, I mean, you could interpret that how you will, you know, Hey guys, like, Hey investors, we were able to make the toy cheaper and charge more and people are paying for it. Or they could argue and say, Hey, we're able to make it, you know, not, you know, not cheaper and charge more and Hey, they paid for it. I mean, you could only interpret that how much you can, but at least they're, what they're trying to say is here, their cost against their sales is working for them at least. Uh, they also said they've managed to lower their advertising costs, meaning that they don't really do advertising as much anymore, and it seems to not be a problem. So, I mean, I mean and that's in all honesty in the in the, the days of the Internet today. I mean, if you really want to have ads and everything like that, it's, it's important. But a lot of the fans almost kind of do the advertising for you when you really think about it, even someone like me, you know, who talks about it all the time. And then they bring up... Uh, that uh, Magic the Gathering as a digital platform is growing exponentially and doing a lot of money for them, which doesn't cost them anything. It's digital. It's, it's you know, there's no cardboard being printed. So uh, they don't mention Transformers here. So it's, you know, kind of interesting to bring that up. Unfavorable. And here's where it gets interesting. Higher, ro higher royalty expenses. They pay royalties to their partner brands, Star Wars, Marvel, Disney Princess, Overwatch, Trolls, Beyblade, Frozen. Seems that their royalties really took a big bite out of their uh, out of their profits. Specifically, uh, royalties went up 21% in their costs. So, hmm, that's going to uh, take a big bite out of them. They also mentioned this, higher intangible amortization associated with Power Rangers. Now, what does that mean, amortization? Well, that's when they're trying to figure out if something that they invested in is going to pay off. So it says here it's highly, un it's untangible right now, meaning they're not able to tell if the investment that they made, pretty much buying the Power Rangers from Saban Entertainment, is paying off. They don't know. So all this stuff, like they see it's an emerging brand, it's up 4%, but we don't know really like the exact you know numbers that they really need to hit in order for this to be, you know, profitable for them. And they're working really hard at making Power Rangers profitable and, and something enjoyable for hardcore fans. So, but the fact that they're saying they don't know if it's working and that's something they're publicly saying, hmm, interesting. Uh, they don't bring up uh, Transformers though, so at least it looks like it's okay. And they say that Bumblebee kind of did pretty well for them uh, from a brand standpoint, at least. Because we all loved Bumblebee. It was a good movie. Then they say here, higher shipping and warehouse costs. This one, mm, this one is 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 worrisome because it's something where they're like, hey, you know, we have to ship out stuff to stores. We got to ship out stuff to our warehouses. And this is just costing us way too much. And supposedly, I mean, they're, they're trying to kind of also tie it in with how, you know, Toys R Us with their bad debt. And how, you know, now it's one less place that they could be selling stuff and making money. It's, you know, and then they try to spin it where, you know, like what's going on with Wizards and Magic and how that's digital and how that's, you know, something that doesn't have shipping and everything. It's something like me going like, oh, man, are they going to are they going to try to push something like Hasbro Pulse or Hasbro Store even more so now? 
and try to, you know, suggest even mildly to investors that, hey, if we like put less inside Walmart and less inside Target and other stores or even Toys R Us Canada, would you guys be against that if we save on our shipping and warehouse costs? You know, that's that's something that's something to really chew on and try to make sense of, because that's <laughs> that's something that if they really phase that out, I don't know. I don't know. That's I mean, I can't imagine them doing that, but it's just it's really something that's suggestive here. And then they go about, uh, you know, where's the money coming from? Sixty two percent of the money comes out of the United States. Two uh, percent comes out of Canadians. But we're we're a, we're a smaller country, not physically, but in terms of amount of people. Uh, Europe makes 14 percent, but Europe's a, Europe's a big continent. You know, we're, we're talking Canada country. We're talking United States country. We're talking Europe continent. It's a lot of people. Uh, specifically, if you go to say like British, you know, you're talking three percent. China makes up one percent. Brazil to uh, Russia to it's you know Australia to so sixty two percent is still America that's buying Hasbro product. Uh, other is seven percent there. Obviously, has a, a majority of the Hasbro product that we associate with Hasbro um, when it's over there and let's say the likes of Japan. It's Japanese, and thus it's Takara. So that's not the case. Uh, you know, it could be like you know something um, in the case of back in the day, like let's say Korea. A lot of uh, Hasbro and Takara product were under Sonokong, but that's not the case anymore. So now it's Hasbro. So that's a whole other story for a whole other discussion in the future. I'd like to talk about that, the history of Sonokong and Hasbro and Takara, but that's for another time. But essentially, what we've learned here. What we've learned here essentially is franchise brands didn't do well. Transformers in this third quarter did not do well at all in terms of sales. Uh, 8% down. It, you know, it, it, we could blame it on, I don't know, Play-Doh, you know, Nerf, My Little Pony, but there's not many other brands in those franchise brands that we could blame. You know, there's no G.I. Joe on the shelves right now. You know, you can't you can't point the finger at that. There's no mask on the shelves right now. Um, you know, stuff like Rescue Heroes and all that, that's actually doing well for them. Not so much uh, uh, Rescue Bots, but at least Rescue Heroes is doing well for them and some of that stuff, the Play School Heroes line. So it's it's a whole other story, you know, and, and same thing. The, the fact that Hasbro Gaming is down a whopping 17 percent. Is that Transformers? Is that magic? Their digital seems to be doing well, so they don't seem to really mention that. But is it magic? Is it just that board games are dead and no one cares about Jenga and Scrabble and, and the game of life? Or is it really the Transformers TCG that might also be pulling that down? Because, again, when you look at the partner brands and the emerging brands, those are doing well. But, again, those are also brands that are video game related. More, more younger demographic really eat that kind of stuff up. Like, again, Beyblade, Fortnite, Overwatch frozen so it's one of these years where they're the way that it's being spinned is hey are the brands we owns didn't do well but don't worry our partner brands made up for it what we as transformer fans take away from it is oh maybe transformers didn't do well this time around and maybe the card game isn't as doing well as we had hoped but hopefully that'll pick up i almost want to feel that a lot of us just weren't spending because a lot of us were looking at Unicron, you know, I always find it in the third quarter. It's kind of, you know, after a convention season. So a lot of the adult collectors kind of put their money elsewhere and, you know, and, and not so much so in uh, plastic toys, but more so travel and vacations and going out or conventions. It's, it's, that's one way I could spin it. That's one way. I'm pretty sure if anyone else has a different opinion on that, I'd love to hear it because it's, that's one way to spin it. But otherwise, it wasn't a good third quarter for Transformers if you're looking from Hasbro's side of things. But I, at the same time, the other thing that's kind of concerning is their obsession with digital and the move to digital and, and how digital really worked out for them because of how non-cost it is. So, I mean, what that means for us, who knows? Maybe another, you know, boost with the cell phone games or something. Uh, we'll see definitely with Earth Wars and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But... Definitely, that's all I really want to talk about. Kind of just touch in on all this. I'm going to link in the comments below. I'm going to link the whole thing. It's it's a you know it's a, it's a 29 page thing to go through. It's a lot of numbers, 
A lot of it is gobbledygook to a lot of people. But if you're someone like me who obsesses over this stuff and knows this stuff, um, I always say, you know, you can't you can't criticize Transformers, the brand, or anything Hasbro does unless you understand what's going on. You know, you, you, you can't complain about the pizza if you don't know how it's made. You know what I mean? It's like, if you know that it's made terribly, then you have a reason to c criticize it. So it's just, there's there's a lot to understand here. And um, it's a lot to read, but it's always interesting. And that's why I kind of do these videos to kind of like give people the short version of it. So they don't have to go through like 30 pages of stuff here. And there's also like, there's, there's a video too, if you want, even where they did a, a Skype call with all the investors. And, but that's, if you, if you want to sit there for four hours, that's your call. But yeah, that's that. Uh, definitely, um, definitely we'll keep you guys posted on that. Although, although TFCon is coming up in a couple days. So, uh, we might have a little bit of a dark period of no segments from Transformer Slag during TFCon weekend because I will be busy. But otherwise, uh, I'll try to keep you posted as best I can.